Good morning and welcome to our daily <clears throat> Good morning and welcome to our daily word and prayer. My name is Tom Short. So glad to have you along with us today. So we get in the word of God, talk about it. I'm coming to you today from North Carolina. I guess yesterday I had some audio problems. I apologize if that was hard on your ears listening yesterday. Tried to fix it this morning. We'll hope for a better time today. We do get in the word of God here every day and want to follow it, want to obey it, want to learn from it. So, so glad you're along with us today as we share and teach the Word of God. We're talking about the Great Commission. And I refer to this, I think of this as the marching orders of the church. And we saw that it, as we read the Great Commission, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That's, that's, a, that's a heavy introduction, is it not? That's not, that, that's kind of saying, listen up. This is important what I'm about to tell you. Not only was he saying it after he rose from the dead, that's, that's pretty important stuff right there. But he's saying all authority. This is important. What's he say? Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. What's that mean? What's that mean to make a disciple? This is what we want to talk about today. I'll finish the verse here. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. But I want to talk about this question of what does it mean to make disciples? Because I believe as you look at this, this is the, the heart of what the Great Commission is. Sure, we talked yesterday about how he tells us to go into all the world is the scope of where we should go. What we should be doing, but baptizing, making, uh, and teaching them to observe, these are important things. But it seems to me the operative word here is to make disciples. The people would have a new identity. They would become new creatures. They would become new people. They would become a disciple of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? What's it mean to be a disciple? Believe it or not, this word is debated by people. And some people, I, in my opinion, try and make it watered down. Some people try and make it too complex. To me, it's, it's pretty simple. A disciple is a believer, someone who believes in and follows Jesus Christ. That's, to me, it's pretty simple. A disciple is a genuine Christian. If you are a genuine Christian, you are a disciple. If you are a disciple, you are a genuine Christian. Now, there are people who say they're Christian who don't really understand what that means, and so that's not who I'm referring to. But this is what a disciple is, someone who has entered into a faith relationship with Jesus Christ, and as a result of that, they're now following him. They're recognizing this authority that he says he has. He claims to have all authority, and a disciple realizes he has all authority. He's my king. He's my Lord. He's my God. I've, I've left the domain of darkness, and I'm coming into the kingdom of God now. I was on the path of destruction. I'm on the path of life. I was going my way. Now I'm going his way. I am a disciple. I am a follower. I am a believer. I'm part of the church. I've entered into the community of Jesus Christ. This is what it means to be a disciple. Some people want to turn this into kind of like a two-stage thing. They say that you can be a believer and not a disciple. That you can believe in Jesus, you're going to go to heaven, everything, you know, you're fine, but now you want to go to this second stage of being a of becoming a disciple. You were a believer, now you're a disciple. And I just don't see that in the scripture. I certainly see in the scripture that we become progressively more sanctified. What I mean by this is that we grow in the Lord, we we learn in the Lord, we we become more understanding of what it means to follow Christ. We just like anything else. It, it, when I got married, I got married. I was a married man, but as the years have gone by, I've understood more and more of what it means to be a husband. When I became a father. I was a father, fully, completely. But as the years went by, I understood more and more of what it meant to be a father. If you have a, a job, uh, uh, say you're an engineer, you are an engineer the day you are accredited or as an engineer, but you grow in your understanding of what that entails as the years go by. 
me and my role as a pastor, minister, preacher. I was a preacher the, day, the first day I was out there doing it. But as time went on, I've understood more and more. This is life. This is life. You don't make it to stage like I was not a preacher then, even though I was preaching. But now that I'm more mature and understanding, I became a preacher later. No, this distinction between being a believer and a disciple is not, I, I think it's just, it's unnecessarily there. What do we want to say? The Christians are disciples. We're to go and make Christians. We're to go and make followers of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to stress that this was not only our commission, and this is not only what Jesus was doing when he chose his disciples to follow him, but it's also, we see this modeled in the life of the Apostle Paul where he gave us his purpose. And he says this, Colossians 1, 28 and 29. Paul says, and we proclaim him, Jesus, we proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom that we may present every man complete in Christ. For this purpose also I labor, striving according to his power, which mightily works within me. I want to stress that just like Paul saw that his purpose in life was to present every man complete in Christ, or in other words, to make disciples. When they have faith in Jesus Christ and are saved, they are made complete in Christ. But they can. But that's not the end of our. That's the beginning of the journey. It's not the end. It's where we begin now to follow Him. We begin to grow. We mature. Our lives get transformed to be more and more like Jesus Christ. And so, my friends, we don't call that the end. We call that the beginning of this journey. And Paul's desire was, as he proclaimed Christ, he would present men complete, mature. The job, the job starts and finishes in Christ, and he points out <clears throat> that he labors for this. He works for this. He, uh, he puts forth his energy to do this, striving according to the power of Christ working within him. This is important that we realize is that to make a disciple, it, it really, it, we're cooperating with the Holy Spirit. We can't do it without the Holy Spirit. We can't change a life without the Holy Spirit. Certainly, we can't give new life to a person. Only the Spirit of God can do that. And to really transform them is something that happens on the inside with the Spirit of God. But you and I have a role to play. You and I have been given this commission to go make disciples, this command, this purpose that Paul embraced. And you and I have been given the same purpose to go and to make followers of Jesus Christ, to make mature followers, to help people know him and know him better. And we do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the Great Commission. And all this, my friends, it leads me to this really significant question. Has the church lost sight of this mission? It's a pretty heavy question that comes back to me as a as a Christian, as a church leader, comes back to me periodically that I, I, I want to make sure I don't lose sight of this. The, the, to lose sight of, of the, the primary purpose that we as believers have to bring others into relationship with Christ and to help others grow into spiritual maturity so that we are all of what Christ wants us to be and to spread that to the nations of the world. I have been convicted from 1 Samuel chapter 15. And there God had raised up Saul to be a king. And part of the job he gave him was, he said, I want you to go and destroy the Amalekites. This wasn't the first task he gave him, but he did give him this task. I want you to go and destroy the Amalekites. Now that's a heavy task. He was going to have a war and go, go, go fight and kill all of them. Well, he went and they, they fought and they killed most of the Amalekites. And the ones they, but they didn't kill them all. They left Agag alive. They left some of the best sheep alive. They said, well, we're, we got these sheep because we want to uh, sacrifice them to the Lord our God. So we didn't kill them. We, you know, we, we used them, we're using them for religion, shall we say, for, the, for our sacrifices. And God sent the prophet Samuel and he sent him to Saul with a heavy message. He said, Saul, I regret that I made you king. You were a nobody. 
you were a nothing. And I raised you up and I gave you this leadership role and I made you a king. And I gave you a mission to go on it. And you didn't fulfill the mission. And Saul said, oh, I did fulfill it. Look at all I did. I, look, I, I killed so many Amalekites. Look at what I did. And God said, no. Incomplete obedience, partial obedience is not obedience. To take the command of God and to reconfigure it, to do something that you want to do or within the realm of what you're comfortable with is not obedience. I know as I read this passage many, many years ago, and I was thinking of the Great Commission at the time, and the Great Commission was fresh to me. I was thinking of all the things that as Christians we get so involved in. A lot of very good things, by the way. A lot of very good things we get involved in. But if they neglect, if they cause us to become distracted and not fulfill the mission he's given us, that God wants this gospel to go to everybody. He wants followers of Jesus. He, God loves people. He sent Jesus to save people. And certainly, we, I, I think of the big picture of how cultural involvement relates to people being saved, how how our schools, our education relates to people getting saved, how our entertainment relates to people being disciples. If, if, it's, if all these things are working against us, there are certain cultural things that I'm deeply concerned about. I imagine you are too. But the answer and the goal, let's never forget, is to make disciples for Jesus Christ. He's the king. We live in a world of, where the world lies in the power of the evil one, and we're to press the kingdom of God forward and, and the world system and the devil and his kingdom backwards. And we do this by making disciples, leading people to Christ, growing them in the Lord. Now, we saw yesterday, we may have different roles to play in this. It involves communication, teaching, serving, finance, uh, prayer. It involves so many aspects to advance the kingdom and to make disciples. And we all have a role to play. But my brothers and sisters, I'm haunted by the question, has the church lost its mission? Has the church lost its way? Are we allocating so many resources to just kind of maintaining ourselves without saying, without realizing that the advancing the, the, the gospel, making disciples, the needs are great. Sometimes it feels like, we're in retreat. And so I challenge us with this today. If you're a church leader, I want to challenge you. It's not easy, and I'm not saying it is. And, and there's so many things that have to be done that press in on our time, press in on our priorities. But let's remember, Jesus gave us these marching orders. And as we think of Saul, and we think of God gave him a mission, and he did a lot of other really good things, but he didn't do the mission. I want you to pray for me. I want to pray for you that as we think of our lives and we think of the time we have here on earth, we make sure that we do the mission God has given us. Make disciples for Jesus Christ. We'll be talking tomorrow and the next day about what that looks like. How do you do that? How do you make a disciple? Of course, this is a, a quite an involved thing. It's simple but involved. But I want to start by saying, first of all, is your church making disciples? Are you making disciples? Are you teamed up with other people who are making disciples? Are you supporting people who are making disciples, praying for people who are making disciples? Are you, is your service and your activity, does it have it as its goal and its purpose? We're making disciples to glorify Jesus. He's the king. He's brought a kingdom. He's the Lord. He reigns. He deserves all honor and praise. And are you involved in helping make disciples? disciples of all peoples, all the world, everyone who's on this planet. We want to be a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray about this if we shall. Father in heaven, we live in a world where there's so much evil. We live in a world where we want to fight that evil and we want to defeat that evil and we want good to prevail. And we know that the way you have said this will be done is to make disciples to make followers of Jesus Christ, to lead people to Christ and help them to grow to maturity, to present every man complete in Christ. And I pray, Father, for every man, woman, boy, girl, young, old, 
that comes on this live stream, we would become better disciples. We would become better followers, and we would multiply our lives being making disciples. Oh, Lord, help us to do this. It's not easy. And we know we need to be filled with the power of your Spirit to do it. And so we ask a fresh power, empowering in our lives by the Holy Spirit. And we ask, Lord, you would use us in this mission, wherever we are, whatever our realm of influence, whether it's big or small, whether it's our, in our own family, with our own children, whether it's our friends, our school, our church, maybe a church leader, maybe, a, maybe have a national ministry, whatever it is, that we'd never lose sight of what, what it really comes down to, making disciples of Jesus Christ. Help us to do this. Help us to bear great fruit for you. I pray for us to be hundredfold fruitful Christians. And I ask all these things, and we, we pray we'd not be souls, Lord. Forgive us if we've gotten distracted with good things and missed out on what you've really called us to do. Help us to do some soul searching. Help us, Lord, to make sure that we're on target. We need your grace. We need your forgiveness. We need your mercy. We need your wisdom. We need your guidance. We pray for this. I pray particularly for leaders today. Lord, uh, that if they're off track, if they've been distracted, help them to have the courage to make course corrections to remember this calling of the Great Commission. We pray it in Jesus' holy name. Amen.